All right, let's do some planning and uh, try to get your head right on how you want to organize your Inkscape layers, what I was calling folders earlier, if you caught that, which isn't exactly right. So let me open up my Inkscape again and zoom out so you guys can see. And if you recall, we just have our SAT layers so far. Now, this is two courses. It's two 18-hole courses, the Hershey Country Club. Um, the first 18 are kind of on the east side, so over here, and the second 18 are on the west side over here. Um, and you can see I have my SAT overlays. And remember, I locked those so I can't mess with them. So what you have to decide is how you're going to organize and keep things straight. Now, when I say organize and keep things straight, this is for you. There are no hard requirements. There used to be in V3. So those of you watching this that have done a V3 course, we had to put all of our shapes in particular layers, and those layers had to be named uh, very precisely or we had problems. That is gone. You can name your layers whatever you want now. You can name your shapes whatever you want. However, if you are new, let me make a suggestion for you is break things out at a minimum by like a few holes at a time. Like if you want to create, for example, uh, let's start and let me say, first of all, here, do let's just do two holes to start. Take that through the entire course. OK, I, when, and what I mean by that is do two core, two holes now, then you're going to take everything through Blender, take everything in Unity play your game with two holes, okay? Because it, the whole process is gonna make much more sense if you just do a couple holes. You will be able to come back into this Inkscape file that we're doing right now and add your other holes and progress and add those and then take those through Blender, take those through Unity and add on to them. That's not a problem. Um, but the problem is if you do something now and you only find out in Unity, which is two steps away, that what you did is incorrect or not exactly what you were trying to accomplish, you just wasted a lot of time if you did your entire course, okay? Not only that, but there's some things within Blender that can get kind of complicated, and if you uh, do your entire course, it's very hard to troubleshoot if you've got 18 or 36 holes splined out. So for what we're gonna do, there's a pretty good spot here which has some water on it. This is actually hole one right here. This is the driving range over here, incidentally, not important, but uh, maybe we'll talk about that later. Uh, but this is hole one right here, and this is hole two right here. And those are the only ones that we're gonna do. And what I'm gonna show you, you will eventually apply out to everything else when you come back to do the rest of your holes. So what I would recommend and what I really like to do is I create basically a layer for every hole. So what are we gonna do here? I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna hit new layer and I'm gonna call this hole one or 01. Now that's the old nomenclature you had to use before. You can call it anything you want. You can call it lickety splits if you want, but hole one makes sense. So now I've got hole one highlighted. Anytime I add a shape, it's gonna end up in hole one. But let's do two holes. OK, so I'm going to add another layer here. I'm going to call this one hole two. And I'm going to add that one above current. Actually, let me put it below this one. Remember, order is very important inside of Inkscape. Now, I just like this because hole one is, to me, should be higher than hole two. But remember, our shapes have to be at certain areas. So it might keep in mind that as we're building this out, your shape that you're making does not have to stay, let's say that I wanna put this, I don't know, this cart path, okay? It's kind of a bad example, but I don't have to put this cart path in either hole one or hole two. I could, and I will, I'm actually gonna create a whole nother uh, layer called cart pass, which will be all the way on the top, kind of like that hole 98 concept I talked about earlier, way on top. So keep in mind that these layers are just for organization. We do not have to keep a whole one object like a fairway inside the whole one layer we could put it in hole two if we wanted to it doesn't matter these are just the ways to keep this organized in your head another reason i like to do this is because i can also lock layers then so if i do a bunch of stuff in hole one and then i move on to hole two i will lock hole one that layer i'm sorry and that way, I don't accidentally put a shape. It's really easy to do this, you'll find out. It's really easy to accidentally put a shape in a different layer, okay? That's why some people don't like to use the layers because you run into things like that. So there's a give and take for each one. 
But as a new course builder, I would suggest that you do layers like this. It's going to help you out in the long run. Okay. So go ahead, think about your first two holes and decide. Um, let me give you an example here. Let's say that these, this was hole number one. And let's say that this here was hole number two. Well, they're really kind of adjacent to each other and almost touching. In that case, I might want to put those, and I might call this like hole one and two, okay? Um, and then I'll do all the shapes within there. Now, since this is a 36-hole course, what I actually did when I, when I spined, I actually called these like hole 55 over here, even though there's no such thing. Again, you can call anything, you can call these things any way you want. So take a look at your course, the first two holes, and decide, do you, do you want to put those in its own, each hole in its own layer? Do you want to combine them in this, the same layer? Or do you want to keep them separate? So make that decision and uh, go ahead and build that out.